So what's going to happen, I'm going to first mix just a basic dough. And it's a, just an old-fashioned recipe. Probably it's the one from the Old Better Homes and Gardens or the Old Betty Crocker cookbook. And the reason I'm doing that, that will make me talk about ingredients that I like. It'll make me talk about my tools that I like and about the techniques that I like. A lot that I'm going to say will be my opinion. And you can take it or leave it. Some, a lot of what I'll say will be fact. But I'm not going to say, now this is a fact, this is what I think, because you'll be able to guess. There are certain brands that I like, and I'll just tell you that, and I'll tell you why I like certain equipment. So what we'll do is get started. Are you okay to have a seat and everybody's? Yep. Did you hand out something? I did hand out something. And if you're a couple, if you'll just take one between you, because we have some people coming for the next two. Oh, oh okay. You're not a couple, okay. I was trying to make you a couple. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll get started right away. So turn your recipes, and you don't need to take notes because everything that I'm telling you is actually in the, in the, yeah, I think it is. And what I'll do when I get home tonight, I will read through this and say, now, is there anything that I told them that's not on there? So then I can tell you next time, here's what you need to do. Or make sure I have your email address if you're not coming for the next two classes, and I'll get in touch with you. I don't sell anything, so you don't have to worry. I'm taking your name to sell anything. OK, the recipe I want you to turn to is Never Fail Rolls. And I think it's on page four. OK, now. We'll get started here. And this is the way I'd bake at home. I have all my, well, uh, these are the equipment and all the things I'd use at home. The first thing it tells us is proof the yeast. I should know the memory. Yeah. Soften the yeast in look, lukewarm water. And I think it's a half cup of water. Yeah. OK, so we'll put a half cup water. And you probably know these are liquid measure. And these are for dry measure. So you, that's how you should be doing your measure. Okay, I have a half cup of water. Put it in the microwave. And on my microwave, 12 seconds would get it. Oh dear, it went to a minute, but that's okay. We'll stop it before it gets there. And I always use purified water. Just a minute, I don't want this to. Okay, yeah. I Okay, let me see. Remember, I have clean hands. Yep. That should be no more than 110 degrees. And I believe, and this one's a fact, the reason most people have a failure with bread is because they proof the yeast, and that means add the yeast to water to prove that it's active and alive. Prove that the uh, yeast is still active and good. They proof it in water that's too warm, and that kills the yeast. Yeast is a microorganism. In one tablespoon of yeast, there are 130 billion living cells. And it's alive. And if you add it to water that's too warm, you'll think, oh, wow, look at that. It's really working because it'll just poof right up. But then you've killed some of the action of the yeast already. Then when you add it, or if you add it to ingredients that are too warm, you'll all be adding the yeast to a dough or to a start of my batter. If that's too warm, it kills some more action of the yeast. And by the time you get to the actual dough, it's already pretty inert. And when you bake it, if you make rolls, you probably have little hockey pucks. OK, some of the things I'm going to tell you will be true, or I'm sorry, will be cheaper. I'm looking for my tablespoon is what I'm doing right now. Uh -huh. Well, three tablespoons. Three teaspoons is a, oh, here it is. I have it. I was going to tell you three teaspoons is a tablespoon. Here's one place I'll save you money. This is the best yeast, Fermapan yeast. And you'll often, if you see bakers on television or um, in King Arthur flour, I've used it for years. One package, of, a pound of this yeast um, costs $3.99 at Harmon's. And I keep it in the freezer, sealed in a Ziploc bag. I think I can probably make, I'm, I was going to look it up, and I forgot that too this morning. I think I can get about 40 tablespoons of yeast out of this. So you see, that's 10 cents per
per package, and a tablespoon is the equivalent of a package. Okay, we'll put that in our water, and we'll get that out of the way because we're done with the yeast. Oh, does it say two? Thank you. Okay. Some of my recipes say one for the same thing. Thank you. You, you might have saved the day. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, it's Firmapan. Let me show you. Firmapan. Oh, where is the camera? Oh, the one on, oh, I'll probably dump it. Okay. Okay, here we go. Firmapan. I also like Red Star yeast, and I also like Fleischmann cheese. I tend, oh, you need a chair. We need to get, can somebody pull up another chair? Um, okay, and everyone, uh, make sure you get your name on the sign up sheet that's up there. Okay. Oh, you're there for the other class? No. Oh, okay. Okay, I think someone's bringing you a chair, so it's okay. Okay, so we have our yeast in here, and then I always add a pin, yes? The question is, after the yeast, you run the temperature and you take it out of the No, you do not. Okay. Just add it to your lukewarm water. That's a good question, and I like it if you ask questions. Uh -huh, Mary Lynn? Where can you buy that uh, I get it at, at uh, Harmon's. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, but, and I do like the other yeast too, but it will keep for several months in the freezer. Okay, now we want to really whisk this up well. You remember it's a microorganism, we need to spank it alive. And I love this, here's one of my handiest little tools, a little whisk. I use it all the time. And then we want something for that yeast to feed on. So give it just a little bit of ascorbic acid, vitamin C. And you don't want too much, or it'll make it foamy. Actually, make it, uh, it seems like my baked bread is foamy if I get too much. Or you can put just a little bit of sugar in. Don't get, uh, not a quarter, not even that, not even an eighth of a teaspoon. Yeah, probably under, um, just a little bit, and you're better to go a little light than too much. And if you put sugar in it, don't put, again, there about an eighth of a teaspoon. If you put too much, it actually makes it drunk. It, I mean, it makes your yeast, you know, really slow. And that's a true story. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to use this spatula. And while I'm doing this, this spatula is more flexible. And somebody told me once, you know, you can buy the spatulas that are all split and they're pretty expensive to clean your beaters. Just get a, one that you pay less for, cut it yourself and you can clean your beaters with that. Okay, so I'm gonna clean that yeast from the side. Then I need to work fast because I'm proving my yeast. I'm proving that it's working and it's, it's working. I don't know, can you see? I don't know if you can see more. Can you see more on the camera? No, what? The little bubbles. Yeah, the bubbles tell me it's alive. Oh, and also make sure your yeast isn't out of date. That's something that would kill your, your product too. Okay, now we need the milk. And you be my recipe reader, so I don't have to keep going back. And it's, yeah, yes, right. <laughs> and wait till the end. Okay, now we want one cup of water or I'm sorry, one cup of milk, <laughs> and scalded. And that's an old recipe. We used to have to scald. Let me get this in the microwave, then I can talk. On my microwave, 110, one minute, 10, well, this is the one that takes off, so it took off. Um, one minute, 10 seconds scalds it. And you really don't have to scald anymore. We used to have to scald because be, uh, before they pasteurized milk, the microorganisms in the milk would kill the, micro, the yeast, the microorganisms in the yeast, or the, the yeast microorganism. So that was why we scalded. it. I've been baking for a long time. I'm a creature of habit. And besides that, we'll put the butter into the bowl, and that hot milk will help melt that butter. Now, using butter or margarine, butter's better for us. I'm using lots more butter. If I'm baking for a competition, and the only competition I do now is a fair, 
um, cut it up. But I do like the texture of Does margarine. The shortening? shortening, and that we're using butter instead of shortening. That's just what the recipe said. Okay, we'll t okay. We're, I'm cutting up this butter. I heard the microwave. So. Okay. And I recently read the best butters to use are best for flavor, for eating, are Danish lower pack and the Irish butter. So I don't know, but I do like till. What? Yes, I couldn't think of the name. Okay, thank you. Um, I do like uh, Tillamook products. And then somebody else said, oh, no, Land of Lakes is the best. I don't, I use uh, butter that has salt in, salted butter. Uh huh. Is that whole milk? It is whole milk. And at home, we use 2% milk. I need to stick my finger in. Oh, it's hot. Yep. I don't know. I would never, I've never done it. Give it a try. It should work. Um, you'll certainly have a different product, but I don't know why you couldn't use it. But you know, almond milk wouldn't have the fat in it. Um, you give it a try and let us know if you do it before next time. I've never done that. I, I but at, I use whole milk because it gives a better product. It gives a, a it just gives a better product. But at home, when I'm baking for us, I use the 2% milk because that's what we have. Okay, I put that hot milk in there and it should be melting the butter. Add a half cup of sugar. Sugar I'm not particular about. If um, you're doing any candy or frostings, you want to use cane sugar. And I think most sugar that you buy is cane sugar. I like to use brown sugar in rolls and in white bread. I like what it does to the the uh, the look it doesn't make it brown and when I make whole wheat bread then I use um, oh honey and you should use honey produced within a 50 mile radius of where you live it's like giving you an inoculation against the uh, pollens in the air or I use molasses and I don't want to use whole molasses because it makes it too full bodied, but I use a mixture and you can play around with that. You can use corn syrup, but that's not healthy. We know that's the wrong sugar. No sugar is really healthy, but some is better for us than others. Okay, then this one says to add, is it a teaspoon of salt or two? It's one. It's one. Okay, and here's another one. Of my, I'm real fussy about my salt. This is salt produced right here in Utah, Real Salt. And next week, I'll bring you an article about Real Salt. It's all the good, healthy minerals in it. No anti-caking or any preservatives added. I love the way it is on meat, and they have a coarse ground salt. Um, and uh, the article that I have says that it's actually good for your blood pressure which that seems a little strange, doesn't it? And uh, I get it at Harmon's. I get, you can get it at Fry's, little uh, you know, fruit stand. You can get this a lot of places. It's, I believe it's, does anybody know $5.99 or $4.99? It's more expensive, but when you think of the whole scheme, how many teaspoons do I get out of here? How much does that difference does that make in the cost of my bread? And I feel I have a much better product. Okay. All right, how's my yeast is coming up? Can you see it? Okay. Now, let me, let me do some mixing here. Okay, I wanna feel that and see how that is for temperature because we don't wanna add the yeast. It's too warm, yeah. It's a little, it's a tad bit warm yet. Let's do some more mixing. Um, one thing I didn't tell you, some recipes say not to add the salt. I'm going to come here so you can hear me. Not to add the salt until later because salt retards the action of the yeast. But um, it's okay if your bread rises slowly. It's really better to have a slow rise. And I really like a cool rise, too. I think you have a better texture and a better flavor. You know, old recipes used to say, did any of you see a recipe, put it on a heating pad to let it rise or put it in a warm oven? I never do that. 
And if your bread has a yeasty taste, do you know what I mean by a yeasty taste in the bread? And some people say, oh, I love that yeasty taste. Well, I, no, I don't think that's a better quality. And that's because the dough has risen to, in a place too warm, or you are working with, and it was still working, but it, it, it's not the, I don't think that's the best quality. Okay. 110 to 100, no more than 115. Yeah, and I do, I use a thermometer a lot. And while I'm talking about it right now, I used to have a, I still have a thermopan, and it was, I think it was $95. And the battery went out on it. So I, we looked up a battery, and it was going to be almost as expensive to get a new battery. And my husband saw this online. It's called G Dealer, and it was, Fourteen dollars, Susan, wasn't it? Fourteen or seventeen on Amazon. I like it better than my my thermopan, and I've had it for a long time. So, and I use my thermometer a lot. We could check this right now and see what temperature it is. I use this when I'm baking. Mick, if you need to do anything, you know, tell me. We can break into whatever I'm doing. Maybe ten minutes. Okay. Oh, I might be done in ten minutes. Oh, this is only 101 degrees. So that's good, we can add the yeast to it. Okay. Okay. Let's add the yeast. By the way, I let my KitchenAid do all the work, as you can see. Um, uh, we were talking about this with one of the ladies who is here now. I've had my, my this is the third KitchenAid that I've had. But I have a Bosch that I've had for 44 years. And I, make, I use it when I make my whole wheat bread. I make four loaves at a time. And that, this can't handle for the dough for four loaves. Okay, let's drop this down. I feel like I'm working left-handed. Well, I am. <laughs> okay. If you have questions, please shout them out because I'm not looking up. So I like it when you have questions. Okay. Now we added the yeast and we're ready to add the flour. Now, flour is something I'm really fussy about. And when we moved to Utah, I'd always been using King Arthur flour. And I still like King Arthur flour. But it's expensive. It's $5.49 for five pounds. But then when we moved here, my neighbor said, um, because I bake all the time, and he was a bachelor, and he'd come over and take the bake, and happily take the baked goods I happily gave him. And he, um, he said, oh, there's a restaurant in Kanab that makes the best rolls. Oh my gosh, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, 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 would, <laughs> I would have noticed, I do bake. I'm not an imposter. Oh gosh. And it's three eggs. Okay, here's, I, you know, I was thinking when I said the flour, I, it seems like I should be talking about something about things I'm fussy about, and one is my eggs. I like King, or Eglin's Best Eggs, and they're considerably more expensive. I was in a cake competition once and made 28 chiffon cakes, practicing, and everyone uses eight to 10 eggs. And I decided, I have to quit buying those expensive eggs, so I bought some cheap ones. There was such a difference between the Eglin's Best and those other eggs. And if you don't believe me, I think, Mary Lynn, you're not the one who has your own eggs at home. Yes, and that's the best of all. I mean, if you have your own chickens, that's the best. But I don't have my own chickens, and I think what well, most of us are so lucky. But take... I, I tend to use extra large, but American recipes are written or tested for large eggs. European recipes are tested for medium eggs, which is interesting. But have you noticed the eggs that are now extra large are the size that large eggs used to be? And the eggs that, yeah. So I tend to use extra large more often. And you should whip them up first. It makes a lighter product. I, something I haven't said that I'm really meant to start with, I practiced yesterday several times. You can really abuse bread and it doesn't, it, it will take it. You can put an extra egg in or 
leave an egg out or you can get a little too much flour or not enough flour and it's not going to spoil the product. You can't do that with a cake and you can't do that with cookies. You can put a little more sweetener and not as much sweetener. About the only way you can spoil it is to kill the yeast or burn it. So, okay. Thank you. Uh, because my bowl isn't quite big enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could, you could, I would have slopped all, you know, it would have splashed all over. Okay. All right. Well, I'm getting rid of a lot of things so you can see better. Okay. Now we're, now I'm ready to talk about the flour. <laughs> Anyhow, when we moved here, our neighbor said, you need to go to Kanab. There's a restaurant on the main street, and I think it's called Johnson's. They have the best dinner rolls. I couldn't stand it till we got there. Here's some water. And we went to that restaurant and they give you, I think as many rolls as you can eat. And I think they're just a plain old basic with water. I don't think there are any eggs in it. It's just a basic roll. They are delicious. But I said, do you share your recipe? Oh, and I don't have a spoon, but that's, it's not good to dip like this because it settles more. Um, but anyhow, they said, no, but we do use flour from Lehigh. And that was the first I'd heard about Lehigh Mills flour. And um, if I can't, well, so now I have friends who get me Lehigh flour, bring it down for 25 pounds, I think it's $9.99. So you're $2 for five pounds, better product. I, I promise you it's a better product. And they have one called Turkey Brand and one called Peacock Brand. And the Turkey Brand is all hard wheat with a higher gluten. And then the Peacock Brand is less gluten. But when Joan went up to get it, the lady who worked there said she uses Turkey Brand for everything, for her pies, her cakes, her cookies, and her bread. But when I, when I don't have my turkey flour, I really miss it. <laughs> so, uh, Lehigh, you have to go up to Lehigh, up by Salt Lake City, yeah. And it's an old company. I'm, and when I went, we went up and I said, could I have a tour? Well, of course not. You know, they can't have people walking in to see everything, but I, I really went to see them. By the way, they filmed the movie Footloose there in that mill. Maybe I'm not telling all of you anything you don't know. Okay, this is three cups. Is it five and a half cups? Five. Oh, five. And that's one that you need to play around with. And if you're going to err on the side of getting too much flour in or not enough flour, you're better to get not enough because if you get too much flour in, it's going to make it dry and tough and crumbly. And you can, and you'll always add more when you're um, kneading it on the kneading cloth. And as you knead it, okay, let's, it doesn't say, uh, I should read that recipe. This isn't the one I, <laughs> this isn't the one I, I always use, it's the basic recipe. I make more whole wheat, but okay. You just have to trust me. Okay, now. What we're going for, when we start out, we start out with gluten globules. Okay, get a picture of that in your head. You know, globules of the gluten. Then you go to gluten strands. And I think that's the stage where we are right now. I need to come around there. I don't want to swing it up in the air. And, oh, you need a chair. We, uh, there is a chair back there. And yeah, if you'll put your name on the list. Okay, I know we're at gluten strands right now because I can see it. We've gone to the gluten strands, and then eventually we're getting to gluten mass. You know, just that good round uh, bunch of dough. I can't think of the word I should use for ball of dough. Thank you. Okay, and when you soak your dishes um, from bread baking or anything with flour, soak them in cold water. That makes that flour dissolve. If you soak them in hot water, it kind of cooks it. <laughs> yes, Susan. Oh, um, it, it, it just mixes it better. And one time, 
I can't even remember. By the way, there is a hotline. Oh, that's something. I mean, I'll tell you that in a few minutes after Mix does his. Um, uh, one time I talked to somebody who sold Bosch mixers, and they said, oh, you don't need to use a whisk at all. Just go directly to the kneading hook. But when I started, I started with the whisk, so I keep on with the whisk. But right now, I'm going to the, the hook. And I have bent lots of whisks because I tend to work with too much stiff dough. Okay, and, but you can replace those whisks. Okay. All right. Whoopsie. What am I? I need to look at it head on here. There we go. Okay. Sift, oh, I, that's what I didn't tell you. Nearly all flour that you get now is sifted, pre-sifted, but I still sift it. And I sifted this into those, that plastic. And then I got sidetracked when I told you about the flour. If I can't get my Lehigh Mills, then I do King Arthur. You know, you want the better product. If I can't, there is another flower called White Lily out of Tennessee. And I, uh, we can't get it here, but when I go to visit our kids in South Carolina, we can get White Lily flower there. If I can't get any of those, I will use gold metal. I think gold metal works. Um, I don't like Pillsbury. I think there's quite a bit of filler in it. And if you, you know, try, have the two together, but here where we are, we can get all these other choices. I'm what? Uh, I, that's out of my ken. But if you have, uh, if you work with gluten free, you need to have xanthium gum. And um, I just, I don't know anything about it, so I won't pretend I do. But yeah, I know what, I just read something about it, and I thought, you know, I'm not even going to start getting confused with it. But I do um, gluten-free cookies and gluten-free uh, uh, quick bread because I have a friend who needs gluten-free. Yeah. Okay, now we want to mix quite a lot at first. Nick, am I running into you? Are you needing to... Okay. And we could actually, it's nice to have a batter. The recipe I often use, and you have it in this handout, says to make a batter and let it rise before you add all your flour and then add the last about one third of the flour. So I could do that if Nick needs to work. I have, yeah, uh-huh. And that's fine too. You have whole wheat which is good, and we'll work with whole wheat uh, either next time or the, the time after that. Um, yeah, I like to use white, and, and um, I do more with whole wheat than I do with white flour, except for the cinnamon rolls. Okay, now here's where we need to watch because it's easy to get too much flour in it here. And I should be scraping the sides more often. Okay, Nick, I probably need only a couple more minutes. And you don't want to knead uh, dinner rolls too much because it'll make them tough. You want a, a more tender crumb with that. When you're working with whole wheat bread or with uh, sourdough bread, now Mick won't be kneading much at all. But with some of those uh, breads, I mix a lot. Like I mix my whole wheat bread 10 minutes. I need it 10 minutes. Because you want lots of gluten. Um, I grind my own and I use hard red winter wheat. Or if I'm out of the wheat, I will buy King Arthur. Either the white or the whole wheat flour. Um, I have a, a, a pail that I put it in. Um, one time, when I first started making bread, 44 years ago, I got weevils. And it was at the time I had bought a whole bunch of flakes and grains, and boy, when you get weevil, that's awful. Yeah, but it is, uh, they're very heat sensitive and cold sensitive. If you have room in a freezer, it's good to keep it in the freezer. 
I use my wheat or my bread flour pretty fast. Yeah, and I keep an eye on it. And I think you can, if you get from a good, reputable place, you don't need to worry about the bugs. And I don't keep it long enough it could ever get rancid, which can happen. Okay. Okay, um, you know, my name is Mick Bat, B-A-T-T, -T, and I sometimes I introduce myself and they say I'm Mick Bat, and so they say Mick Bat, M-C-B-A-T-T, -T, but it's not that. It's two separate words. <coughs> And so I, and I, was, I was taking Sandy's class and she was asking individuals who, you know, if they've worked on bread or any, did anything like that. And I, I said, yeah, I've, did, I've done artisan bread, but that's all I know. I mean, I've only done it for the last year or so. And now, uh, now you know, so suddenly I, I'm stuck in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> so <laughs> so who, who, uh, who, who makes artisan bread? Okay. So, you know, you can chime in. Okay, artisan bread, the word artisan basically means uh, you're an expert, you know, you're, you're super knowledgeable about all this <laughs> stuff. You know all the chemical composition and, and everything that goes into making some pristine bread, but um, that I'm not. And so, but it's a recipe that's been around for many centuries because it's so simple. It's just flour, water, sugar, and um, yeast. So you just have the four ingredients and it's quick to make. The big difference is you can make, it's called five minute bread usually, but you can make it in five minutes, but you gotta wait forever for it to rise. That's the big difference where this bread will be done much sooner. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll just show you how I make it. And if you guys, I, I can always use suggestions because this is all I know. I, there's so many different recipes out there about artisan bread. They all vary a little bit. They all work. There's many flavors you can do. Uh, this is just going to be a plain artisan bread, and that's the considered artisan bread is considered just those four ingredients. If it's anything more than that, then they it's you know different. But everybody calls it artisan bread. So uh, so what I'm going to do is, huh? Is, that, is this recipe on the back? I, yeah, I believe you it you is, put it on there, it right? It is. Uh -huh. And I, I copied the one in there that had the seeds in. Um, yeah, and I think, I don't know if Mick's using seeds. Yeah, well, we had, we had some friends over the other night and I made some bread and, and I put a bunch of seeds in it and I was like uh, uh, sunflower seeds. And, and so, I, so when I took the dough out and I, I smelled it, I go, that smells weird. You know, and so then uh, I, did some, uh, well, anyway, we served it and everything, and I said, I think this tastes really weird, and I didn't like it. And so after, everybody ate it, but afterwards, we were looking at the sunflower seeds, and they were rancid. <laughs> they were just not good. So when I measure the uh, flour, they, most of the recipes say you're, you gotta be pretty precise on the measurements, and, but I'll usually try to get a scoop, and then you just, run your finger across it to make sure it's actually a cup. But I've noticed when I dig in, I'll get a little pocket of air right here and it gets covered up. And so I, I gotta you know, do a little something there to make it uh, settle down. So I've just got the flour now. You know, there's, all the recipes will vary about how much yeast to put in. It's, a lot of them are a quarter teaspoon. Um, and I, I'll go a quarter to half. Just put that in there and then uh, salt. It's in in the basket. This or oh, yeah. Oh, this stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this recipe calls for two teaspoons. That's a teaspoon. Did you put the yeast in the water? No. Yeah. It, yeah. This it's really simple because you just throw this stuff together and you mix it real quick and you don't mix it a lot. Okay, and then I need a cup, a half. What's in here, milk? Okay. I'll just read. And I, I think, in my opinion, <laughs> when you're making this, you gotta get these 
fairly close on the measurements. How much water? Cup and a half. And what about the flour? It's three cups. And well, you'll get a little better results if, you, if it's warm water, but it'll rise faster. But since this has to rise normally, I've done it sooner, but you know, probably six to 12 hours or, or maybe 20, you can go 24 hours or you can put it in the refrigerator for a while. So I'm just gonna mix this up. And, it, and the difference between this and regular bread dough is this is sticky and it's a real pain to work with. Um, because it's all, you know, it gets on your hands and you can't get it off. And so, but that's how it is. But it needs that moisture in there when it cooks. Um, and because that, that's what makes the bread uh, brown up uh, on the outside and makes the crust. Because this bread is usually a real hard crust. And so that's about it. And I'm, I'm done making the, the dough. And... And, just, and then I just happen, you know, this is a plastic thing. It works great for me, but it's, I just put in that and I set it off the side and, and maybe wait, like I said, six hours. I've done it in four hours, but it doesn't, it doesn't get as fluffy, I don't think. Um, and how about anybody else? How, how often, how long do you let it rise? Overnight in the fridge. Yeah, done that. Oh, right. Yeah, I normally would. I don't, uh, I don't have them with me. But I baked one. In fact, you can... This one... <laughs> bread, these breads, you never know how they're going to come out. Well, I can... It, so, see, like the crust on this is already getting a little soft. I, um, normally it would stay hard. But the trick, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it again here and put one in the oven because I've already... So anyway, let me back up. You do this. So then when you're done, after it's raised up enough to how you want it, then you take it out of there and it's going to be gooey and sticky and put it on a, uh, you know, a surface where you can knead it a little bit. But you don't knead it a lot. You just, you know, you push it down and squeeze it around. And I, sometimes I'll tick it up and I'll just roll it up underneath here. And often you're creating air bubbles in there and you want air bubbles. Um, or if you may, wanted to make an elongated roll, you can flatten it out a little bit and then fold it some different areas like that. And if you look online, there's so many different ways to do it. So whatever I'm saying is there's lots of variations. How much sugar did you put in? No sugar. No sugar in this. Um, and on the seeds, like it's in the recipe, I, I had no idea how many seeds I put in. So I measured it out for Sandy's, Sandy's class to see what I was putting in there. Um, I didn't put any sunflower seeds because I'm out of those rancid ones. So, <laughs> so this is uh, flax and whatever else is on that list. I can't remember. Anyway, so, but it, oh, so <laughs> once you uh, get it, you know, kneaded down a little bit, then I basically um, will do this. I'll just this is. I'll put it on a board like this and I'll cover it with a towel and that's, I'll let it rise maybe another two hours. You can do it in 30 minutes. You know, it, it varies depending on what recipe you read. I think it works better if you wait longer, maybe an hour, two hours. So this has probably raise, uh, risen maybe two hours. And, and so that, that's the one step I haven't really shown here. I can't because there's not enough time. But, and the other secret too is um, getting that oven hot. The oven should be at temperature for maybe 30 minutes. And it should have, uh, whatever you're going to cook it in, should be in the oven the whole time as it's heating up. to make Because that thing, it really makes a big difference if you have that heat uh, in that pan. And I, I use, um, you know, I use this, this Lodge cast iron enamel pan. I think that works the best. I've got some clay Ones that my mo uh, my, my mom, <laughs> my wife uh, bought me, and they they're good, but they don't they don't make the crust quite as well as this does. You can cook it on a say like a cast iron skillet or a pizza dish or something like that, and put a water pan underneath because you need that moisture. It, it doesn't come out quite as good as this. 
But what I fight, and I, and I don't, I'm curious if anybody else, how, they, how else they do this and how they cook theirs is, I gotta get it off of this and into that hot pan. And I mess it up all the time. And this one got messed up because I, I'm trying to squeeze it in there without burning my knuckles, and half the time I do. And then I, and then I get it to that point and I go, ah, and I just drop it. And so this flattened out a little bit. <laughs> it was a little higher. And so um, if you wanna, you wanna cut this up and- Sure, yeah. You can. I used a cast iron, an old, my grandmother's cast iron Dutch oven last night. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The artisan bread in that work. Yeah, it works yeah. the best. But this crust has kind of gotten stuffed. I threw it, threw it back in that pan, and when I brought it here inside that, that pan that's in there, I think it softened up. Oh, I, I know what I did wrong with this. I was, the timer went off when it hit 30 minutes, because I'll cook it for 30 minutes, and then um, I'll take the lid off, and then I'll let it go for another 10 to 15 until it gets nice and crispy brown. And that's where you get the hard crust. Well, this time, I turned the oven off instead of the timer. And, <laughs> and so, it, so it didn't quite do what I thought it was going to do. You had a question in the back? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there's no grease or anything involved. You just put it right in the bottom of that pan. This is just beautiful. I don't know if you can see. This is like you get in an expensive restaurant. Can you all see that? And we're gonna, is that basket, could, if we could have that basket and we'll pass this around. Can we use the whole loaf, Nick? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. So I'm going to try to get this in that thing. Yeah. Yeah. And now That's, it's, it, this oven's much higher. Oh, I should have used, I was thinking. Well, I thought about it too, but I, oh well. Shoot, yeah, there's not time now. And on these kind of, uh, 450. Uh, some, some will cook it at 500, yes? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I meant to be more clear about that. Because you, you punch it down a little bit, you know, and then, kind of reform it into a ball and then you let it set for a couple hours and just covered it up. I, I mean, I just put a cloth over it. I cover it up. Oh, with it. Yeah, yeah, I'll just put a, a dish towel over it. Another question that somebody over here answered. He about this water. At one point you said something about a pan underneath this water. In the oven, if you're going to use an open uh, skillet or something or a pizza dish pan so you're gonna because this is going to be covered for most of the cooking and but you need water in the oven if you're not going to have a covered container and then I what do you call these things what is that? uh, that's a lame oh yeah of course a lame uh, so <laughs> this is to, if you want to cut it, some grooves on top of the bread and I, you know, it wasn't until your class, I could never make this thing work. I thought this was a piece of junk. But, <laughs> uh, but you said you got to do it quick. Yeah. And that was the secret. <laughs> so I just, uh, you know, I'm just going to make a slice here and then a slice there real quick like that. I would take, I would go much slower and this dough is sticky and it, and it would just <laughs> turn jagged. How deep do you cut? I don't know. Quarter Yeah. Yeah. Where'd you get that food? Uh, King Arthur, and I'm going to talk about some places where you can get good. Uh, we'll start this around, and then I'll keep cutting. It takes me forever to cut. Go ahead and take the basket, and I'll okay, keep Okay, I think I'll just take this thing out. Try this to is beautiful there. bread. Ooh. Hopefully I'll, I'll close the oven. Okay. Maybe set it on the stove. Yeah, I don't know right. how that surface and is. And you want to make sure you got thick hot pads, because that puppy is hot. Yeah. So I just try to gently pick it up <laughs> and put it in there, but now it's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you don't put anything in there in the, inside the pan. Huh. Uh, there's more coming. We need more. Everybody didn't get it, did they? Did you all get some? Oh, it's coming. Oh, did it? Oh man, that's too complicated. Is there a timer? Oh, there, uh. I'll use this. <laughs> okay, yeah. Where is it? The timer, did, did you find it? 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's 30 seconds. In France, they have ovens that, and you know, French women don't bake. They go to the bakery because they have such good bakeries. But they have ovens with uh, spigots in the side and then they release steam throughout the baking. Oh, and that's yeah, how yeah. the French bread is so good. I imagine people have it here in the States too. What? Need more bread. <laughs> Mick, do you have more bread? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait about 45 minutes. <laughs> this is just beautiful bread. And then, uh, can't have this bowl, but somebody can take the dough home if they want we to do have, that. Um, hmm. Does anybody, uh, we might have a, if we need to figure out, I was going to bring you flour and I didn't, <laughs> don't have it there. Um, how can somebody get that home? Nope. Yeah. I, I, Saran yeah. wrap, you know, it'll start expanding. Just, uh, yeah, somebody can take it. Thank you, Mick, so much. Do you have any more? You have questions for Mick, everybody? They have questions for you, I think. Yeah, they, Mick. yeah it's, I didn't. I was trying to go quick, but what do you have? Yes. How did you make it? Go ahead. Where, where did this one not of, one get? One of the things I do is, is I like to get some uh, wheat and sprout it. You know, right. wet it down, sprout it, let it, let it get soft, and then add that after I've made the dough, and then put that in where you put your sunflower seeds in. I put sprouted wheat. I'll be darned. So you got the little green, little green sprouts in there? Yeah, well, whole little kernels of, of wheat that's soft. And oh, okay. And not, not, they didn't grow up into, okay, there's. No, I don't let it go very long. Okay. No. Interesting, yeah. There's no roots, no. lots of nutrition in sprouts. Oh, yes. Yeah. There's as much vitamin C in a half cup of sprouts as there is in a, in a gallon of orange juice. But then the sprouts have a lot of other minerals. Questions Go I ahead. have for me. Why kosher uh, That's what the recipe says. <laughs> and it's better. Most gourmet it. recipes ask for yeah, kosher salt. Yeah. And, or this is also good. I don't know if it makes much difference. I've done both, so... <laughs> get the red silicone gloves oh. from Amazon. That would be uh, that would be nice because getting that bread out too is. I'll usually take those hot pads and try to get them in there. You could just dump it out because it comes right out. But the red ones have you remove the liner and more flexible. Okay. Red and the purple. The purple are thicker, more difficult to navigate. Oh, but the reds are because yeah. but the red will heat work against oh. this hot pan. Yeah, it's all okay. It's all silica. Good. I've seen those. I, I'll have to try to get some. Okay, good idea. There was other questions in the back, was there? All right, so. Thank you. Thank you, Mick. Yeah. So what'll happen in about 25 minutes, I put this for 30, in here for 30 minutes, then I'm gonna take the lid off at the end of 30 minutes and go another 10 or 15. And you never know on somebody else's oven, I don't know how these are, uh, we'll just see. It's on that recipe. It's oh, flax it? and oh, I can't remember. Here. Yeah. And I didn't measure them, so I don't know what how much is in there. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that was, yeah, that was bad. Yeah. Smell it. It definitely, definitely tasted funky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I it was a brand new one. I just opened the thing up, and, and plus these were roasted ones, and I. I didn't mean to buy the roasted ones. I wanted the raw sunflower. So, all right. Well, good. Maybe we'll get some more Thank bread here in a little you, bit. Yeah, that, that I'm motivated to try. I'm, I, I want to get this finished for us. That was really great. That's, okay. I'm not sure what I did wrong, but mine was just not as good. I think practice well, makes perfect. They come out different all the time for me. <laughs> okay. okay, I'm going to quit. If I were home, I would mix it a little bit more, but because I want to talk to you and I can't. 
Okay, I'm going. I'll just use your. Uh, I'll clean. I can do oh, all okay. this. Thank you so much. That's all right. Now, um, you. I think I've said this. If you're going to err on the side of having too much or too little flour, you're better off to have too little. And I might be I right on the border of that now. I'm going to use this butter to butter my hands. I use a lot of oil at home, too, when I'm <laughs> greasing my hands. Okay. Okay, and I, I don't know if you can all see me. Um, with this recipe, you really don't half it's not necessary to knead I don't say so you don't need to knead <laughs> but it's not necessary to knead it but we do need to get this flour incorporated so I'm going to put butter on my hands and then when you knead this is a very therapeutic thing to do up up with your fingers down with the heels of your hand and you can feel when you've kneaded enough um, I'll show you this isn't well I'll show you right now what would happen if I pinch this you see, it just kind of clunks apart. And when you've kneaded enough, it'll form a membrane. And I'll, I'll show you that. We'll knead enough to get to that. Oh, here's a little of, there's one of your seeds right there. OK. I need to roll my sleeve up. OK, I almost got too much flour in this. And if I did that, I could add a little bit of liquid at home. That's not an ideal thing to do. but. If you do get too much flour in it, you can do that. Okay. Now, when Mick was talking, I thought of things I wanted to tell you. See if I can think of it now. Um, my kneading mat, can you see this kneading yeah. mat? Uh, these are canvas, and they come on a frame, and I quit using the frame. And when I first got, when I first started working with these kneading mats, I washed them every time. And they just kept shrinking and shrinking, and then I'd send for more, and I'd fight with that frame. And I decided, you know, you really don't need to wash them every time. But you can't just have it stored with that egg and, and, and uh, fat in it. You'd get a rancid taste and make people good and sick. So I fold it up, and I have four mats, one for whole wheat bread, one for cinnamon rolls, one for white bread, and one for pie. Fold it up and put it in a Ziploc bag and keep them in my freezer. And then I wash them maybe. Oh, you'll be afraid to eat at my house. Uh, probably every six weeks, maybe. But it's been in the freezer, you know. So it's fine. And when you wash them, they're a mess. Because all that flour, I soak them in cold water and try to I, you don't want to pour it down your sink, but kneading mats. And then the other thing, I do a lot of baking on baking mats. Do you, or parchment paper? Oh, no, because you use your well, Dutch about, oven. I was going to try parchment today to lift it into that pan. Mm -hmm. But it stuck so much to the parchment, parchment I thought, I, I don't know. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, it it's might. It's sticky dough. But. And might, because I bake entirely differently. My recipe, and yours, yours is the best. Your, your artisan bread is so much better than what I do, but my recipe said to sprinkle semolina flour or cornmeal on the bottom of the pan. Yeah, I've done that too. It, might, it burns, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it? burns, because the pan's pretty hot, so I, I quit using it. Okay, do you all see how springy this is getting? And when you're working with the dough, if it's getting stubborn, here's something. I took baking classes from a baking guru in Iowa. You throw it down on the mat. I'm going to have flour flying all over. And it makes it relax. It's like you're, you behave. Whoops. I'm going to have things to clean up. Now, let's see if I have that membrane I was telling you about. And you should never tear dough. Um, Whenever you're separating dough, work with a bench knife. OK, let's see if I can get that membrane. Yeah. See, that shows it really are marginal. 
it, I, I could need it some more, but I'm going to quit because I have other things I want to do with you today. But that's needed enough. And then we need, you should never let you, oh, that's where my other bowl is. It's in the refrigerator that I was going to then transfer and use. You should never let your dough, well, it's not that big a deal. I make it too emphatic. But don't let your dough rise in the same pan where you mix it. And I can't tell you the reason. But I know when I, um, if you'll read recipes, they say transfer to a grease bowl or transfer to a bowl. And when I, I taught bread baking classes in, doesn't matter where I taught them, in Illinois. And one of my students said, oh, my grandma said you should never let dough rise in the same bowl. And, and just from the re reading the recipes, there's some reason. And I should have a clean bowl. I don't today. So desperate means desperate measures. But we'll, we'll use this bowl. I greased it. I'm greasing it. Okay. You mentioned something about when it gets stubborn, slam it down. How do I know it's stubborn? Stubborn is when it, it's like fight, it's springing back at you. It's just almost fighting you. You know, you're, you're just really struggling with it. And when I make the braid that I will do probably next time, um, I like it to be cold because that makes it relax, you know, when it, and it's more inert. And then I can work that braid so much easier. Yeah. And if, if it were warm, I would probably, I won't do the braid today. I'll do dinner rolls. But I would be throwing it down like that to get it to relax. Okay, we'll grease the bowl and turn it. We're not going to let that rise as much as we should. Although we're doing great. Do you see we've mixed two batches of bread in an hour? You know, people say, how do you have time to make bread? It doesn't take that much time. Well, you... Well, no, but if you, know, if you know all the ingredients and you don't have to look it up, it's pretty fast. Yeah. Well, obviously, I should have been looking it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But we'll let this rise. Now, let's see what I... I have other things to tell you. Let me wash my hands and I'm going to get some magazines out. Okay, any questions before I go any further with? Now, a lot of us could be doing this by hand. Does that take a lot more time? No, it, well, um, it just takes more work, but that's no problem. I have a Danish dough hook and I don't use it that much, but um, I, I used it when I made the dough yesterday, the artisan bread, because I remembered Mick just, I mean, he, when he needs, he hardly needed, and you folded it, didn't you, when you were doing it? Isn't that what you did? Do I remember wrong? Oh, last semester? Last, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I did some folding, and I, it's not much. I mean, as much as, as long as it took me to mix the dough originally is about as much as time. As long as you spent. It's just amazing that such a good bread takes a little time. But yeah, you can, I would do a, a lot of mixing. The hard work is when all the flour is in it. So do a lot of mixing before, when you add, anyway, you should do a lot of mixing when you add the first, like, third of the flour. That's when you want to get that gluten, those gluten strands started and get the gluten. And the gluten is that, that quality in bread that makes bread what it is. Think about cookies or pie dough. They don't have that gluten. And so you want to get the gluten working. I would use a wooden spoon. That's just my, and, um, I'd use a glass bowl. That's just the way, you know, my little quirks with things and do a lot of mixing at first. If you have a hand mixer, do you have a hand mixer? I'd use a hand mixer. And that's what I do if I'm, whenever I visit people often, they say, you want to make some cinnamon rolls? And, and uh, they don't all have kitchen aids. Or, so then I use a hand mixer, but be real careful. You can bring your hand mixer out. Do a lot of the mixing with that third bit of flour and then you can gradually add the rest of the flour. Yeah, any other questions about? Okay, I'll talk about some magazines. Um, I talk, oh, I didn't talk about my one hard spatula. Oh. Well, that spatula. Oh, I there use, it is, yep, that, okay. The one I use is, uh, it's got a thick handle, because if you use a I thin one, it's gonna that. snap. Yes, and yes. I think that was the one from, what's her name? Mary Drummond, is that her name? Mary 
the one in Oklahoma. Oh, is she? Oh, Pioneer Woman? Pioneer Woman. Oh, yeah. I've heard about her. Yeah, I noticed. Yeah, and this one. That's a good one. Would, I like that one. This one would snap too. Yeah. It's just this inflexible spatula, and I don't know where you can get these. That same lady I took from in, uh, she was in Illinois, not Iowa, years ago, sold a lot of baking things, and I bought quite a few from her. But this is so good with that stiff dough, these inflexible ones. Um, I don't know if you went to Williams Sonoma or Sir Le Taub, they might have an inflexible spatula like that. Okay, now I'm going to talk about some cooking magazines and some supplies that I like. Have I thought, those of you who are with me before, did I forget anything on the basic with techniques and tools? That bench knife is a good tool, the lame, which I didn't bring this time, I'm glad you brought that. And like Mick said, just give it a sh 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 Otherwise it collapses, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, my favorite cooking magazine is Cooks Illustrated. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. I've gotten Bon Appetit and uh, Midwest Living and Southern Living and uh, oh, what's the one people send their recipes into? Taste of Home and all kinds. This is my favorite. It's really... Um, research oriented. They, the, the editor used to be Christopher Kimball. I don't know if you're familiar with him and he would write like a full philosophical little opening and there's a new editor who does the same thing. But then they have all kinds of tips. People can send in tips like Bon Appetit does. But then they research products and, and they research recipes. Like they'll say, okay, let's try if we add an extra egg or let's try if we need it this much. Or they, I did a cinnamon roll that I really liked and I brought the recipe last semester, I'll bring it again. You make like a roux, flour and water. And then, and not very much, like a half cup and then add the rest of the dough and it really makes a nicer texture for your dough. But if they're talking about meat, they talk about different ways to handle the meat and, and they explain the science behind it. And then they talk about products. They'll talk about uh, different, what's the best baking pan to use or what's the best, um, oh goodness sake, I, um, therm, uh, thermometer to use. And, and they, they explain everything and then new, new tools. And I, it's really excellent. If anybody wants the subscription, you're welcome to take that. And they have beautiful covers. They're like works of art. But I really, they went bankrupt in the 90s and then I was so happy when they came back again. Another one, yes, uh-huh. No, they have it on newsstands. And I've seen it on newsstands. It's uh, uh, six ninety five an issue and it comes out every other month. But uh, uh, I think I paid twenty four ninety five. You can look online and get better prices. And I think twenty four ninety five for an annual subscription. You might check with the library. They may have the, the magazine in their magazine area, and, and they allow you to check out the ones that are not the current. Oh, magazine. good. Oh, and that's, I think that's where Christopher Kimball went, to America's yeah. Test Kitchen. Yeah. That, what? Oh, is it Milk Street? Okay, thank you. Good. I'm glad to know. I, I never watch television, but I want to, I've been hearing, I watch the, is it the Great British Baking Show? Yes. What channel is that on and when? Yes, yes. Channel 7. When? Well, you can also get on Netflix. Yeah, it's on Netflix, too. It's not on, okay, that's. They, they have seasons. In the, oh, in the I, I saw it a couple times, and I've been hearing how people are cooking. Here's another good magazine, Tea Time. And if you like to make scones and fancy little breads, and then they show all kinds of pretty wow. table settings. I really enjoy this magazine. And at Christmas time, they gave buy one subscription, get one free but it's just real, a real pretty little magazine. Then catalogs, King, here's a King Arthur. And I have, these are extras. If anybody, they have great supplies, great ingredients. 
The problem is they're a little pricey and their postage is just a killer. About twice a year they have free postage. But if any, and they have recipes in here. You can also access them online and they have a great hotline. I've called them with questions several times. One time they gave me misinformation. I said, my bread is crumbly all of a sudden and dry. No, not dry, it was crumbly. And they said, oh, you aren't kneading it enough. And I knew I was. I was adding too many, you know, I was adding, oh, let's put some oatmeal and some cornmeal and let's put some more seeds. And I was getting flaxseed. It was the flaxseed that was really doing it. Does flaxseed ever affect the texture of yours? Maybe. I don't think so. No, well, I'm sure that's what I thought. I, yeah. I, I get crazy ideas. So, But anybody's welcome to take them. Another one, and this doesn't have to do with baking the Vermont Country Store. It's a new one I've just discovered with old-fashioned uh, butterscotch drops and anise candy and uh, a top. I bought a top for our grandsons and, a, you know, old-fashioned toys. And this is an extra one, too, if anybody wants that. Um, then there's a, a spice uh, company, Pansy Spices, out of Wisconsin, has excellent spices. They no longer have a catalog, I think, because it's so expensive to make a catalog. But you can access them online. Great products. P-E-N-Z-E-Y apostrophe S. They might be a little more expensive, but they're really nice, pure spices. And uh, uh, Cooks did a one of their studies on best cinnamon and they had Pensy's cinnamon is the best. Yeah. Okay. Also, uh, one of the things they also, you can get smaller, uh, large or small containers. So if you aren't really using very much of the spice, oh, you can just get that's, it's a fourth oh, size versus the large one. The large one. one. Yeah. I buy my cinnamon in, in bags, you know. <laughs> And, and then you don't, can't, it's hard to work with the bag, so transfer it to those little ones to keep. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, um, I can't believe we're almost done. I want to make some dinner rolls here for you. Let me think if there's anything. Else. Well, what we can do while this is still rising, and then I'll shape some dinner rolls. I don't know. Um, our, our, our video people here, oh, are we, oh, we're on. That's, goodness, okay. Okay. Are you all squared away with what, um, here's something. Uh, I'm covering myself here. I'm getting some seeds in here. I wonder where they came from. It's okay. Um, yeah, yeah but see, <laughs> and if you need to break in, that's fine. When if, okay, okay, let me make you a spot. Are you all squared away with next week? Oh yeah, last. Oh, I thought last. I thought I'm going to be branded when I was doing that. <laughs> yeah, um, are you all squared away for next week? Uh, I have 25 who are signed up, and that's the, that's the most as far as kitchen space and ingredients to bring ingredients. But if you're signed up on that list and you know you can't come either next week or the following week, if you'll let us know, because then somebody can take your spot. Who I um, somebody did, uh, I think Jan just told me there are. 34 here today. Uh, so, um, I'm not planning on coming to the. I, was, I missed the first session last, last time. time. Uh -huh. So, I thought I'm coming to the demo and see a mess, but I'm not going to. Are you on my list? I don't think so. It, a bit, and, and I just I'm signed up. I just, I, I just signed up on your attendance thing. Kind of so. Okay, okay. Yeah. I But it's that second list. If you're if you're on that second list, and it's the next page, if you're on it and know you can't come one of those days, if you'll let us know, and then a couple people I know would like to come who didn't get signed up. Um, okay, this isn't what I planned to do. I planned to do the six strand braid, which is at home, the dough is at home. I could have done that, but it takes me so long to roll out. You know, I have to roll out the six arms, uh, I'm making all kinds of excuses, and I was going to do that while Mick demoed, but my dough, this dough wasn't ready. So we'll just, I'll show you what I do 
I didn't realize you can see over there, so okay. Uh, I'm going to make some uh, <laughs> butterhorn rolls first. And when I do this at home, I use my pizza cutter. I roll this out. Someone just asked me about doing pizza dough. And I, I, because I don't, I used to do pizza dough, whole wheat pizza dough, and I haven't done it for so long, I don't feel like I should be teaching you something I don't know. I'll teach you what I know, and then you work on pizza dough at home. Okay, so we would roll this out to about 16 inches. Oh, and that gives me, you break in any time, Mick. Where's, oh. You let it cool a little bit and then chop it up. Okay, I actually have a cooling rack. Oh, okay. That is beautiful bread. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you, you didn't have to flour the top of it, floured it itself. Oh, no, I, uh, I did. And the main reason I do it is because when I put the towel on for it to raise, it doesn't stick, you know. It helps a lot, but it, make, it makes it look pretty too, you know. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I left out a lot of things, probably. I thought, I think it's very impressive. That, that's a beautiful, I could go on a magazine cover, <laughs> on the cover of Usually Cooks. it comes out a little higher, but I plopped it in there and knocked it down. So. Okay. Now, I, uh, I really like these uh, co uh, cookie sheets with the air pockets between. Do you all like that too? And then I do a lot with these baking mats, French baking mats. And mine says, I, I bought mine, I think about 2,000. And I have, I think I have five of them. But that one I bought in 2000, they say can use, I think they say up to a thousand times. Bet you I've used it 2000 times. I hope I'm not doing something dangerous. I don't think so. <laughs> They're, I mean, you know, the whatever comes out of it. But I use these all the time or I use parchment paper. I don't do much greasing at all with cookies or anything. Okay, so if I were doing butterhorn rolls, which I do a lot, I would melt butter at home. And I'm not going to do that here, but I would melt butter and then brush it on. I didn't, oh, I use a brush a lot at home. I keep these brushes handy. And just brush, maybe I can brush some butter on it. I don't have anything to melt it in, so we're not, I, I would melt it in the microwave. And, okay, then, what? I think it's dirty, it has egg in it, so. Yeah, but, I, but that would be at home, I, that's what I would be doing. Okay, and then I use a pizza cutter to cut it. And I cut it into 16 parts. And just be careful. You probably guessed my weakness is not always being careful, but you want to get them exactly straight. Divide it into fours. And then divide each fourth. If you like them bigger, you could divide these into thirds instead of fourths. Okay, and then roll these pie-shaped pieces up. Oh, that's a crescent. This is a crescent roll. And you want to make sure you get the point tucked underneath, otherwise you'll have little arms sticking up, you know, when it bakes. And you can fold them, you know, you can make them pretty, we'll make them crescent, but just tuck it in. Okay. And because there's no reason for you to see me do 16 of these, we'll do four, and then I'll do some other shapes. I do like having that camera. Here I thought the mirror was the... Move it so that you've got it on her hands while she's rolling the... You've got it on the cookie sheet instead of on her hands while she's rolling it. <laughs> I guess I could move too. Okay, I think that that's probably good, isn't it? And then we'd want to butter. Can you roll one more? Sure. <laughs> but we'll just roll four more. You just want to cut them nice and even. And my pizza cutter just rolls right up into these. It works. And as I told you, you never want to tear dough. You can use a knife too, but a knife tends you tend to do a lot of tearing when you're working with a knife. Okay. This one, I didn't get that one very even. We'll tuck that inside. <laughs> the eater might wonder, what was that? 
Okay. And it's and put some butter on that, and that's when you'd like real butter. Okay. Now there are lots of other shapes that you can do. Okay. Let's quit with that. Let's do this one, and let's let's just do a round and roll it. And when you roll dough. You don't want to roll in because you won't get anywhere. You know, just keep going back and forth. So roll from the center out. And then let's make this a pretty little knot. Make it a knot. Or I don't need to hold it up. Or you can tuck those arms under more and make a pretty little rose. Okay. Okay. Oh, then what are some other shapes? You can do uh, Parker House, and I use a, I have a little tin cup that is to mix flour and water that's just the right diameter to cut rolls. I don't think this will really work. Let's try this one. This, this isn't ideal, but we'll try it. Just cut it out. And the cornmeal roll, and we'll offer that the last time, is a recipe I really like. You cook cornmeal in water. And then um, I, we made that last, some of them, the class made that last time. It's a favorite, no, cornmeal and milk, I'm sorry, and sugar and butter, and then add the rest of the ingredients. It really makes a nice dough. And then I roll it kind of thick. And you can either just, and with that one, I just kept, keep them round. And they kind of look like biscuits, but they're much better than biscuits. Or you can make a Parker House roll. You want to make sure you tuck it in because as it rises, it pops up. Um, most often, I just grease uh, an eight or nine inch cake pan. And then I just make rolls and just pinch it through my hand. and just place them together in a cake pan. Then you can also cut, uh, roll out some rectangles, small rectangles, probably about four inches. This mat has inches on. If you made your own, somebody said, well, you can make your own. You wouldn't have those. You, I guess you could mark it somehow. You could sew little inch markings, but make them about four inches by, was that inch and a half, and then stack three to four and then just layer those doughs. And that's another shape roll you can make. Somebody else know any other shapes? Can you think of any other shapes of rolls? Oh yeah, the clover leaf rolls, yeah. Uh, just, and th this you would do, but you'd make them even smaller and put them in muffin cups. Yeah, okay. You might keep them all the same and then tuck them together and, and give them a little room to rise. Okay, and we know we've kneaded it enough. You know we do that membrane, but also we have little blisters under the skin. So you can see, this is really nice dough, by the way. I don't know if you can get a feel for that texture. I always think with whole milk, you get a nicer texture. Okay, um, I ta talked about the mats. I know I'll think about you tonight. If you give me your phone number, I'll call you at 2 o'clock and tell you what I forgot. Uh, if I, ha I, I, I will give you my email address. I, do, I like to hear from people about bread. I don't do any forwards or anything like that, but I like it when you have questions because it says to me that you enjoyed class and you want more with bread. My, uh, I have a funny email. I thought it was clever at the time. It's not. It goes into junk a lot. But I, it's too complicated to change it. And it's German for bread baker. It's B as in boy, R O T, B as in boy, A C K E R, Brotbacher, with the number one at hotmail.com. Repeat it. Yeah, Susan. Oh, repeat it. Uh, B as in boy, B as R O T as in Tom, B as in boy, A C K E R, number one, at hotmail.com. 
And I don't, I often don't open emails if I think, just say about bread or something in the subject line. And then I'll open it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Susan. You know what? Thank you. You should always egg wash. Or, or, uh, no, you should not. Not rolls. You should butter them. I, I'm, these I'm just going to... Uh, if somebody wanted to take these home, if, if you can somehow... We can just kind of try to salvage them, like Mick bringing his bread. Um, and you mean for them to try your wonderful yeah, bread? It's falling apart because it's so hot. Right now. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes... Yeah, oh, I love that sound. When you cut bread too soon, it collapses, and it makes it uh, doughy for some reason. Um, oh, egg wash. On, uh, on French bread, I'll probably brush it with water, or I'll, with French bread, I'll do uh, an egg white mixed with uh, maybe a half teaspoon of water, and froth that up real well, and then brush it on with the brush. But uh, yes, and I kind of press them in because they tend to fall off. I use a lot of seeds, too. With whole wheat bread, I do uh, an egg yolk with a little bit of milk, maybe a half teaspoon of milk, or uh, a little bit of cream if I have it, or half and half, and do the same thing. You know, just beat it up real well, brush it on. Be careful. I, I was getting in a hurry, and I just kind of was, you know, just slopping the egg yolk on, and I kind of had egg cooked on the top of my bread. You know, I didn't have it brushed on real well. And that's a, it's not a good taste. So just be real, brush it on carefully. Take that extra 15 seconds, you know, and then push the seeds, gently push the seeds into it. And I use sesame, like, I do like mint, uh, sesame seed, sunflower seed, flax seed. I've been doing kia, that's supposed to be so healthy for us. And I put that in my whole wheat bread. What I do most is whole wheat bread, and that last week, my whole wheat bread is really my best bread. It's one where I cook honey and oil and molasses. Yeah. Yes, it's the one that says four grain bread. It's either, and, and some, depending on what, whether I was adding four grains or six grains, or sometimes I call it my six grain bread, because I add cornmeal to it and mashed potatoes. I often add dried mashed potatoes, or if you have potato water, that's an old fashioned thing. People used to save their, you know, cook potatoes and take that water, and that makes a nice texture too for your bread. Yeah, other questions, Mary Lynn? Oh, that is. It's in there. That's it. It's that, yeah, that's, and I won, bragging, I won state uh, champion in Illinois. I won first with that at, in Virginia. I keep winning at the Washington County Fair. I cannot seem to get the Utah State Fair with that bread recipe.